Would you believe it? But Nova has broken my glasses. Can you believe it? She's broken. Can you see it? It's super glued together. It's super glued together. But why am I talking about my glasses? Why have I done this long-winded wrestle scene so I can talk and bring up my glasses? Did you see how that worked? Well, anyway, why I'm talking about glasses is because that is about part two of our Waves revision. We are going to be talking today about Waves part two, which has everything to do with um, with lenses, with refraction, with reflection, something that basic glasses do all of, okay? They reflect light and um, they also refract light through the lenses. We're talking about concave, we're talking about convex lenses, we're talking about the eye and short-sighted and long-sightedness. We can talk about total internal reflection and critical angle. All of these um, kind of optics are, are going to be um, your questions for today and the PowerPoint for today. So, but without any further ado, after all that fun that we have just had, let's get into the PowerPoint in three, two, one, let's go. Okay, National 5, we are moving on from all things Nova and moving into uh, our second instalment of Waves and talking about the second part of Waves for our revision. Now, as I said from last time, remember we've got three lessons, two revision, one new lesson, the new lessons out every Tuesday and the other lessons are revision material. We're going we're doing waves last week and this week, and then we're going to radiation next week. Okay, so we're going to pile through those um, and try and get you remembering them. Now remember, subscribe, like, and share. That is the consistent message in this unprecedented time. Okay, and let's talk about unit one waves. Okay, let's get into this thing. Um, now today's work is going to talk about reflection, refraction, lenses, critical angle, and total internal reflection. Things that you may have forgotten about since the beginning of S three. So we know that light can travel only in straight lines, okay? It can only travel in straight lines, and if you're a fancy pants, then you may say something about gravitational lensing or whatever, but in this National 5 course, we talk about light moving in straight lines. Okay, so let's talk about reflection. Now remember, when we talk about reflection, we always have to talk about how we draw like ray diagrams. And to draw a ray diagram, you always need to draw a normal. And a normal is a 90 degrees dotted line um, to the surface of a material. So as you can see here, the dotted line is in the middle and it's at 90 degrees to the surface. Okay, now that's really important. Um, we did an experiment looking at the law of reflection and we had something bouncing ag against a plane mirror. And um, I'm just gonna move on to the law of reflection and it says that the angle of incidence, and this is really important, is the angle between the ray of light and the normal line, okay? Always between the ray of light and the normal line. And then the angle of reflection is between the normal line and the ray of light, okay? It's never between the, the mirror or the surface and the ray of light. It's always between the normal and the ray of light for the angles of reflection and for the angles of incidence. And the law of reflection was very simple. It was that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, okay? Right, talk about curved reflectors very quickly. All you really need to know is that um, curved reflectors can transmit and receive signals and they can um, come in to a focal point or they can be taken out from a focal point, okay? Nothing too much there to be said other than make sure you have a wee understanding of curved reflectors and how they work, okay? Now, refraction, this is a very important one. Refraction is a very important one. Refraction is the changing of speed and direction of light as it passes from one medium to another. Can you please remember to say that it's a changing of speed, not of just direction? You will not get the mark in the SQE exams if you do not say the change of speed, so make sure you do changing of the speed of light as it passes from one medium to another. Now we did another experiment with this, and um, I'm just gonna show you the actual um, end result. Now there's a couple of things to point out here. One is that the angle of incidence is again between the ray of light and the normal. The angle of refraction, when it goes into something more dense or a, a, a medium that is um, like glass or from air, okay, so going into a greater density, um, denser material, um, it will be smaller, the angle of refraction will be smaller. But as you can see in this diagram, if you were to take the opposite side of the block, the angle of incidence is small and it goes to an angle of refraction that's bigger because it's going from the dense material to the less dense material. Okay, so more dense to less dense, as we see in the right hand side, it goes from small angle to large angle, from less dense to more dense on the left hand side, 
it goes from a large angle to a small angle, okay? So please make sure that you remember that little kind of small technique. And at the bottom, if anything moves through at perpendicular to the block, it goes straight through and it does not refract, okay? So key things, angle of incidence to the angle of refraction for going from less dense to more dense, it goes, goes smaller and from more dense to less dense, it goes bigger as it travels through, okay? And you can see that the beginning and end outside the block are parallel rays, all right? So make sure you look at that Digest that, pause it, go back over it if you need to just go over that again. Now there's some other things, again, all the same laws exist. Um, as we go into the triangular block here, um, the angle bends towards normal, okay, it's because it's going, um, it's got the refracted angle is going to be smaller than the instant angle, and as it leaves, the refracted angle is now bigger. But it always remember, it's always been the normal and the um, ray of light that's moving through the block, okay? So again, keep cast your eye on that, pause it if you need to go over that again. And then for the semicircular block, the ray of light goes in, angle of incidence in between the ray of light and the normal, and as it goes into the more dense medium, it becomes a smaller angle of refraction. And remember, because the ray of light is going at 90 degrees through, this, uh, through the outer edge, it does not refract. Okay, so that's why it goes straight through there and doesn't refract when it gets to that point. Okay, so that is refraction. Please, please, please make sure you know your angles and what angles are incidence, refraction, and reflection. Now, lenses. You should know that there's two lenses. There's convex, which is a converging lens, and that is where the focus point is brought, um, like an X shape. That's why we remember convex with an X at the end. We know that a thicker lens will cause the focal point to become closer to the lens, okay, or brought closer to it, and if it's thinner, it'll be a wee bit further away, okay, but you can see the light comes in, it then gets refracted towards a point, and that point is called the focus, okay, and diverging lens or a concave lens, we say concave because it looks like there's a little cave there, and um, you're going into the lens, and um, that diverges the, uh, the rays of light, okay, so you can see how it starts to spread apart, all right, so that is the diverging lens. Now, why do we need to know that? Well, we have applications of lenses, but there's no better application than eyesight, okay? And we know that there's a retina in which um, the light in our eyes goes through our lens and lands in the retina, and depending on where it lands, depends on the type of eyesight we have. Some lenses work, some lenses don't, all right? So light enters the eye through the pupil, as we know, and it is then refracted and focused by the lens onto the retina. That is a perfect eye you're looking at there. And that is light from uh, a faraway object. Light from faraway object is always parallel, okay? You can see it's parallel there. So someone who's short-sighted, okay, also known as my myopia, okay, is, um, is light that is focused um, in the retina, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, have a look here. It's light that is focused um, in front of the retina or in the actual eye itself. And when it gets to the retina at the back, um, it's out of focus, it's not sharp. Okay, that's because the focal point is not um, matching up with where the retina is, okay? So um, we need to fix that, we know that we need to fix that. Um, and it's light parallel, can you see that there's parallel light going in because it's things that are far away that short-sighted short -sighted people um, uh, find it hard to see, okay? So things that are far away are um, going to be blurry for short-sighted people. All right. Now, someone who's long-sighted, and we'll come to the lenses that are appropriate for that in a second. For long-sighted, um, the the rays of light. And I'm just going to move on because it's important that we see the diagram. Um, the rays of light are focused at um, beyond the retina. Okay. So therefore, for things that are close by, which is signified by the fact that the light is coming from a point rather than parallel lines, it's coming from a short distance away. Um, the light can't re refract it to a point on the retina. It goes beyond it, and therefore short. Um, or things that are close, sorry, um, are uh, bloody, okay? So long-sighted see things that are, um, can't see things close up, short-sighted people can't see things further away, all right? Now, to fix it, what we need to do is we need to give a short-sighted person a concave lens and a long-sighted person a convex lens. Why? Well, for a short-sighted person, we're trying to get that um, light focused at the retina, okay, and not in front of the retina, okay, so we need to spread out the waves a little bit more, so we use a concave lens, and for the convex, it's going too far beyond the retina, so what we need to do is bring that um, convex lens closer to the retina and bring it forward, and that's what the convex lens is going to do, okay, if you hear any clip clopping, that's just no, I walked into the room. Now, 
Critical angle. Critical angle is the last installment. We know that the critical angle theta c is the angle at which light refracts along the edge of the glass block. So when you see a diagram like that, and you will remember doing that experiment, it goes along and then it goes along the side or along the block um, edge at the top there. Okay, that is a critical angle. That is exactly what a critical angle looks like. Um, when we go um, below the critical angle, we just get refraction. Okay, we just get a simple refracted ray that goes through and um, is refracted out the other side. Remember, it's going into um, it's going into the air, or so it's something less dense. So therefore, the angle is now bigger. The refracted angle is bigger. But when it's greater than the critical angle, we actually get something that reflects, and something that reflects in this case is total internal reflection. All right. So when it's at theta c or the critical angle, it goes along the block. When it's below, it refracts. And when it's above, it reflects, okay? So that's where we get total internal reflection. Now, total internal reflection is really important. We have it in things like broadband and Wi-Fi and those wee trees that light up and lots of different things for total internal reflection. And it's really important. Essentially, we will not have Wi-Fi. You would not be streaming this if it wasn't for um, these things called optical fibers that transfer um, signals and energy from one um, point to another using total internal reflection because the rays of light as they hit each point along the edge are at a big enough angle that they reflect then they do not refract okay so they have total internal reflection along the whole length of the tube now that is us brought to the end um, that is a lot of stuff there National 5 so please do go over anything pause anything um, that you need to pause and re I can redo it, re go over it, look at your notes, all of that stuff. But there's plenty of things there that you can um, now start to um, look at and then do the questions on. So Nash 5, well done. And I hope that was helpful uh, this week. So Nova, how was your fight with Mr. Bill? Was it good? Ah, yeah, okay. Yep. Brilliant. Fantastic. What would you say about that kind of hook that you just had the very last bit that knocked Mr. Bill's glasses off. What would you say about that? Ah, yeah. Ah, good. Well, do you know what? Nova, thank you for um, chatting with us. You're now the dog welterweight champion of the world, defeating Mr. Bill in the final. Well done. Okay, you get a wee treat for that.